thing. Oh. Well, good morning again. Good morning. Happy Father's Day. Well, as you can tell, we're going to be doing something a little bit different this morning, and we're going to be having a panel like we did on Mother's Day, and we want to invite up some special, special dads this morning to come and talk to y'all about Father's Day and about children and grandchildren and and all kinds of good stuff. Y'all ready? So our very first father that I want to call up this morning is Mr. Noah Norton. He is, he's the father to Hazel and to Wyatt and the husband to Hannah. Come on, y'all give it up for Noah. Good morning, sir. All right, our very special next guest is Mr. Johnson DeJust. Did I say that right? All right, he's father to Isabella, Micah, Seth, and husband to the beautiful Juliana. Come on, y'all, give it up, give it up, give it up. Come on. Jules got her a good man right there. Next, we have none other than Mr. Marlon Phillip. Come on, come on, come on. Woo, woo, woo. He is the father to Abias, Ziva, and Soraya, and husband to Carmencita. <laughs> His lovely wife, Carmen. Next, we have Pastor Andy McMahon, father to Gemma, Levi, Phoebe, and husband to Aunt, Aunt Pastor Andrea. I always want to say Andrea. Pastor Andrea, I know, I know. At least you're not called Pastora. Andrea. None other than, last but not least, we have Pastor Manny Rivera himself, father to Callista, Zane, Zion, Zeeland, and husband to me. <laughs> Come on, give it up, give it up, give it up for our men. Woo, 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 woo. All right, young men, would y'all yes. sit down? Grab your microphones. We've got y'all some water there if y'all need it as well. Let's and do this. Let's get moving here on, on our panel. Okay, so, so the very first question, we've got some spiritual questions. We've got some practical questions. So we just want to be able to, to hear from all of our fathers. The first one. That's me. Sorry. Oh, is that you? The first one is on handling conflicts. Oh. Okay. How should fathers handle conflicts within the family that challenge their spiritual authority or lead to divisions in faith practices? So, Marlon, I'm going to give you the very first one. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, you give me the first one. Um, when I thought of this, I always look at the scripture, Joshua 20, 14. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in those land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, just from the practical perspective, I always want to hear my kids. I always want to hear their heart. I always want to decipher what, what that is. So I think it's very, very clear that, first of all, we worship in the Lord in the house. It's, it's non-negotiable. But my kids are going to explore. They're, they're going to be exposed to different things. That's just the reality of the world. Yep. And, and we talk through those things. Yes. But they know it's the standard um, that, that we worship the Lord. Um, yeah, I mean, really, for me, that is also a thing to, to say that we, we go to church more, we pray as a family more as well. Um, something could be missing there. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. Pastor Andy, what about like when, um, maybe if, if fathers or mothers feel like they need to go to one church, but yet the kids feel more attached to another church, Ooh. you know, where there's like a, a dividing of those conflicts where it, it's all good. We all go to church, but yet that, that synergy of that family dynamic is not there because maybe they feel called elsewhere. Really tough question. Um, you know, for me, first of all, growing up for me, conflict was 
That's all there was. There was no resolution or anything like that. So the first part of that is me trying to figure out as somebody who grew up in constant chaos and in constant conflict, the normal. And um, what I found is I looked at my wife and I say, is this normal? Whether or not, like, am I screaming too loud? Or like, you know, if Phoebe, when she was four, she's like, I'm hungry. I'm like, then make yourself a sandwich. And Andrea's like, that's, she's four. And I was like, oh, well, I did that, you know? Um, but as far as like the divide in the household and going to separate churches, that's, that's tricky. A lot of that depends on the age, on where the parents are spiritually and where the kids are spiritually. Um, because I think that the families, the intention is families should worship together and go together. But if the kids have this new desire in Christ, but the parents are like, we're going to go once a month or growing up, my aunt and uncle would come get me and take me on Easter and Christmas. And they're like, this is when you need to go to church. I think that's a little off. <laughs> and so if the kids are like, I want to be there every single week, then, then there's an honoring way to do that. Amen. That's good. There's no set uh, uh, pattern to that because everything is, there's so many moving parts. To yeah. In example, if a parent is going to a very traditional uh, a oh, church that's good. That's good. Uh, with a different language per se because this church is a multicultural language and the kids are more English driven and more connected to a, a more of a modern way and there's that clash there. If mom and dad give the approval, yes. yeah. I don't have an issue with it, especially if they're coming to this, if they're coming to this couple right church. Here. Right here. Okay. <laughs> However, I strongly suggest that you, DLC parents, yeah. Don't you try your best to get your children connected to the house where you are in as I would encourage others now granted. But what if the situation is reversed? Well, as much as possible, try as much as possible to connect your children to what's happening here. And, and if it doesn't happen, well, at least be thankful that they are worshiping come on, somewhere. Come on. come on, come on. That's good. That's good. All right. That's good, good, good answers. Good answers, well, guys. Well, thank you, baby. <laughs> All right. Mr. Johnson, I've got one for you. On setting boundaries, because I know you've got kids elementary and middle or high school. So on setting boundaries, how can fathers set and maintain strong moral and spiritual boundaries in a culture that seems to oppose or undermine our Christian values? Um, first thing first, I want to say that um, Proverbs 4, verse 23, it says, above all else, uh, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Um, as a parent, it's very difficult to tell your children to do something that you're not doing. So good. So, so, so good. the best way to set boundaries is by you yes. setting up the right examples. Ooh, so wow. um, it starts with the small things like cleaning your room. Come on. I, can't, I can't tell the kids to clean their room if I'm not cleaning mine. I can't on. tell them to put the clothes away if I'm not putting mine away. That's good. So little small things like that, believe it or not, it makes a difference in your household. That so awesome. setting up boundaries, it starts with you. That's good. That's good. That's good. Marlon, would you have anything to add to that one? Because I know you've got kids that are spanning all those gaps as well. Yeah, I have little, littles. Um, I, just, I just talk to the practical about what you let into your house. They all have different devices. Um, trying to monitor those devices. I'm almost an IT system admin now, right? Trying to, figure out, <laughs> trying to figure out what apps to put on there so I can monitor them, letting them know that they got to be in open areas. Yes. Um, we, we, have, good. we have different things in our family, right? Yeah. Different situations in our family. Um, talking to them about those situations. Um, talking to them kind of what, what leads into those situations with, with the family. Um, openly and honestly, um, knowing their friends, right? Yes. Even such at a Come young on. age, we have a very, we've known, we only let them, we let them spend the night at other kids, but they go to Pastor Andy's house because we've known him, <laughs> we've known him 10 to 14 years Come and on. all the kids, all the kids play with each other. And then we have another set of friends we've known almost 20 years. Yeah. So we let them go Come there. On. We we know them, we know, we know. We know their character. Yes. Um, we've known them for years. So, yeah. so those are the kind of the practical ways we set those boundaries as well. That's awesome. 
That's awesome. Okay, Mr. Noah, coming to you now. All right, encouraging spiritual gifts. Now, I know you've got young ones, but what are some ways that fathers can begin now, even as your children are little littles, encourage and nurture the spiritual gifts and callings in their children? Am I here? Okay. All right, sorry about that. All right, so I think it's just about having that spiritual discernment to be able to see how your kids are operating in certain spiritual giftings. Like Hazel loves to dance to music. <laughs> so we have music on at the house all the time yeah. because we want her to be able to thrive in what we yes. believe that God is calling her into. And we're trying to have the same discernment with Wyatt as well um, to be able to see what it is that God has on his life as well. That's good. All right, Pastor Andy, how about you? I think the way that I sum everything up is really modeling it myself. Um, like Johnson was saying, like it's hard to have your kids do something that you're not doing yourself. Yes. Um, so as far as encouraging spiritual gifts, it, it's just modeling for me. Like I don't hide my spiritual gifts. And I know that a lot of times when, when I talk to men, it's almost like when, when we're at home, it's a little bit different than when we're at church. And I think that's doing nothing but hurting the growth of the children. Um, I, I'm on this kick where I'm like, let's normalize vulnerability as men. Let's normalize opening up and talking to our children as men. And let's normalize praying in front of our children. Let's normalize prophesying to our children. On, let's normalizing that's when they say that they're hurting, that we pray for healing. Don't yes. just say, you're going to be okay, suck it up. Because, well, that we, yes, we want our, men, our young men to grow into strong men. But how are we going to do that if we can't teach them how to pray and yes. prophesy and make it normal, not weird? And I don't know, I just, I see kids getting embarrassed by that kind of thing. And it really frustrates me. I also want to say too, we have a great set of men in this church. Yes. There are some select men that I believe that I would allow to speak in my son's life. And that's one of the things when I was studying this, um, this question is finding those people that, what, what do you think your son's gifts are? What do you think he's talented at? Um, and, and being able to receive that. Um, my son, I'm gonna brag on my son, highly, highly smart, is in middle school, makes straight A's and B's. Come on, come on. Um, <laughs> come on, Abias. But, but, but the, thing, the thing is, we, I think we are so much alike. We're so much alike, and we're like this, right? So that, I'm always trying to get him to, to, to go here, to do this, to do this right, right? Yeah. But, I, but I need to, to balance that with knowing his gifts, whether he has a gift for tech. I believe he might have a gift for tech. Come on. I believe I'm speaking this now. He might have a gift for, for leadership. Yes. And I've always told him, I said, I want you to be at the forefront. I want you to yes. be a leader here. Yes. I want you to, to lead the other kids here. Amen. So I'll say that. Amen. Very, very good. Can I just ask yeah, you, absolutely. Uh, parents and dads, listen, moms too, but primarily dads. Ask your children's growing up, or even now, whether they're middle school or high school, try to as much as possible, you support your kid's interest, mm -hmm. but you have to be mature enough spiritually that you can recognize their calling within the gifting that's, good. that's within them that's good. now. This is where we make mistakes, particularly in the West. Many parents want to live out their unfulfilled dreams vicariously through their children. Come on, babe. And you force your kids to do things that you felt like you never accomplished or it was a dream of yours that was never given to you when you were a child. Take it from this baseball player with three boys, and I recognize that my boys hated baseball <laughs> hated it with a purple passion can play anyway. but then when they excelled uh two of the boys excelled in dance yep. and one of the boys excelled in swimming i never did any of that but i through god's grace and a lot of coaching by my wife is mm -hmm. i learned to crucify 
my flesh into thinking what I assumed my children needed to be. And not only did I allow them to do these things, I invested yeah. in that. Yeah. So my, I, we spent multiple thousands of dollars with Calista Zane and Zion, Calista Zealand and Zion in dance. Both uh, 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 Calista and, and Zion, good Lord, mercy. Um, <laughs> Um, danced professionally. Zeeland danced it all, danced all the way up to beginning of college, and he immediately switched. And we invested in his creative abilities to produce and work in film. And so, uh, I'm telling you, uh, quit living vicariously. Yes. Invest in them. Recognize what they want to do, but even deeper than that, invest in their spiritual yes, calling. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. That's good. That's for you. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to come right back to my hubby. Um, oh, man, I feel bad. Go ahead. <laughs> Discipleship at home. Okay. How can fathers create an environment at home that fosters discipleship and spiritual growth for their children? All right, so this is one thing that dad really stink at doing. Pastor Andy alluded to it. You, the best form of discipleship with your kids is having these really, Zion calls them, bonding events or bonding moments yeah. where you just have deep conversations with them. If you do this all the time, if it's done all the time, then it's not special. You have to, here's this is what I've learned. We live our life in minutes Okay, um, but we make our life in moments, yeah. and we can't just live in minutes. We live in moments, and we we have to find moments where our hearts are bare open, and we have these in depth conversations with our children, yeah. not to tell them what they need to do, is to encourage them what they need to do. And discipleship is this: I. Form structure for discipleship, but at the end of the day, it's Holy Spirit who does the discipleship. We have our kids cross boundaries a million times. Part of your discipleship process is praying for your kids. But you don't pray in front of them so they can know what you're praying about. You actually pray for your children. But then secondly, you have what in Spanish is called watchalo. In other words, be very watchful over your kids, yes. and, and, and you're still not going to catch everything, and whatever you don't catch, Holy Spirit will let you know. Even now, now that my kids are now in their, in their mid-20s and have one in their 30s, now they're letting me know all the stuff that they would do as preacher's kids, and, that I, and they're telling me like it should blow me away. And I'm like, yeah, I probably had an idea, um, but... But now we laugh about it. But it was these conversations that brought them back to the roots. That's what was the thing that you used to, you, that, that you created a, uh, an art oh, thing? Yes. Basically give them roots and give them wings. So basically you have to establish the foundation in your family. So I, I believe that that's where the roots come from. And when the roots grow deep, when it's time, you give your children wings. They fly and that they're able to go and do what the Lord has called them to do. And at the same time, they always know that they can come back home. Roots and wings. Can, can I say something? Absolutely. Come that on. is like one of my biggest things. Like, I don't know if I say it's a fear that I take my kids to church. I start to get a prayer life over them. I'm going to be honest. Like, I've tried to do devotionals when they were little, really little. And it's like, <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> It's totally like squirrel. Now God is like, you got to get it. You got to get it to them. And I'm, and I'm going to start getting to it. Hold me accountable. Anybody, anybody sees me, say, hey, you did those devotionals with your kids? I'm, I'm going to say that now. But um, I, I would say, I'm, and I'm sorry, that, that scares me that I do all this and then my kids get out and they're just living for the world. It's a big concern for me. Yeah. Um, in my house, we call it Arrows. Um, yep. We pretty much, we let them know that there are arrows getting Amen. ready to be sent out. That's 
that's so, so that's that's something that we we've we've always talked about. But um, I think one of the main things are as you know, we are just here to pretty much create the foundation. Mm. The Holy Spirit does the work. Yes. Mm. So. Amen. You know, a lot of times we're going to get in our feelings where we're going to feel like, but that's our inhuman ways. But the Holy Spirit has control of it as long as we're doing what we're supposed to do on our part. Um, I had a good example. I had a guy that came to spray uh, stuff at my house. And, you know, before he left, he was very nice, young man. And he said, God bless you. Michael was with me. And Michael was like, oh, snap, you Christian? And the guy said, yeah, I'm a Christian. He said, me too. Like, you can see the joy in him. <laughs> like, the joy in him, just, just being able to see somebody from outside come into our home, which is not our family because that's all they, they see at my house. And, you know, the, the guys, you know, was able to, they were able to have interaction and a Christian, you know, and he was really excited. And, I, you know, I told my wife about it. And it shows that we are doing something that is good. Yes. So we should keep that path because at this age, Micah's only eight and he's able to pinpoint simple things that you say that shows that you are in the same faith as him. So that good. shows the difference. And it goes the same way for Seth. When Seth hears Christian songs, he goes crazy. He's, I have trust in God, you know, <laughs> you see his little self. So it makes a difference. And I think yes. that path right there is what we need to follow and keep suit. morning is it's impossible to have your kids do something that you are not doing so it'd be weird for me to expect my kids to be discipled when I'm not willing to be discipled um, so submission is a big part of it right where if I can't submit to somebody and I can't be discipled and I'm not willing to learn then what I'm doing is modeling my kids to my kids and my parents used to always say do as I say not as I do and, and, they, and that was crazy in my house because uh, it, it was wild. But I'm learning that the best way for my kids to see the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do is they're watching me. Yes. And so oftentimes I've got to pull myself back and go, you know, if they're slipping in an area, it's probably because I'm slipping in an area. And sure. so I'm constantly reminding myself, get back to being discipled, get back to submission. And when I do that, my kids will do it as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that what we try to do, I mean, we have two really, really young kids. And yeah. so we do our best just to try to continuously point them back to God. Yes. Um, if there's an area where Hazel gets really, really mad, we're just like, we have to just kind of take it because she's only three. We can only do so much. Yeah. But once the tantrum's over, <laughs> once the tantrum's over, we're just like, okay, what is the root of this problem? Why are you yeah. getting so mad? Come on. And we have to figure, we have to, you know, kind of identify the root and be able to pull it out in prayer. That's good. That's good. Good answers. Good answers. All right. So let's go on to how about overcoming failures? How can fathers, and I'll kind of leave this open to all of y'all because I think y'all have kids that y'all can speak with this on, how can fathers overcome personal failures and use those experiences to teach their children about God's grace and redemption? Who wants to take that one first? I, I can start um, because I have a lot of failures. <laughs> and uh, and when, when we look back at my life, a lot, of, a lot of what I share and a lot of how I teach and a lot of my ministry and what we do is I talk about my failures. Um, and, and one thing that I'm learning and one thing that I'm trying to teach my kids is that failure is not who you are. It's just yes. something that happened. Yes. And, and so while we will all fail, that's okay, but we cannot live there. Yes. And so we repent. That's it. We figure out what we can do better and we move forward together. That's and good. when we fail, there's no sense in trying to hide it. I, I don't hide it. I, I try to be open and communicative with my children and everybody, hopefully about my failures and, and how I overcame them and what I've done because my failures are my testimony. And, and by the power of our testimonies, people can be healed. Come so on. to me, when I fail, I think this is an opportunity for somebody else to experience a healing soon. Then who am I to not talk about it and try to overcome it? Anybody else want to add to that? I think for me, um, the first thing I want to say, his grace is sufficient. Amen. So it doesn't matter how many failures you've had. Come on. As long as you have breath, his breath breathing in you, there's a purpose, there's a mission for you. So um, with me having younger kids, you know, um, 
uh, Isabella, you know, my oldest, um, they all deal with, you know, different, um, different ways when things don't go their way. But as a parent, the goal is to make them understand this is not the end. This is not the end. This is a step. And when you, when you get older and you start facing real life failures, yes. you have to understand now what you've been through as a teenager, as a child, this was a test. Now it's for you to really know that you have to go back to the drawing board. Right. And the drawing board is who? Got to go back to God. Because there's a specific purpose for that failure. Amen. And a lot of times God will put us through these little things just for, for him to, you know, nip us back in be like hey hey you're getting too excited come back that's 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 all it is and it's not your failure it's come nobody's on. failure it's come just on. God telling you I'm still the sole purpose I'm still Amen. I'm still everything you have to understand I'm the one leading I'm the one guiding don't get excited because you dance and you you won everything no the skills that you have are not for you they're I've given them to you for a specific purpose and, you know, it's not your failure. It's, it's, it's always going to be me. So awesome. it starts from little to being an adult. And from, from, from the childhood, you know, experiences. But as an adult, it's just him telling you, come back. That's good. Yeah. Um, the, uh, I guess maybe my boys or, or Calista could be better respond to this. But I feel like. The greatest thing that hinders a dad in, in regards to that question, dads don't like to humanize themselves because of the pride that many men have. So we would rather defend our failure to the end. And I believe that, because I wanted this from my dad, and my dad didn't know the Lord until he was in his 40s, um, late 40s actually, um, but I wanted from my dad was if he could just be honest. But the Riveras are very proudful people. And we didn't want anybody to see us sweat or fail. And so what I have tried as much as I can, failed miserably many times, is to try to be honest with my mess ups and I basically will tell our, my kids hey I screwed up here yeah. or if my kids talk to me about a certain failure situation that I, I'm okay to say yeah I screwed up but man God's faithful Amen. and when I fail you God never fails boy if you could do that as a parent and I wish I can go back and, 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 and go back in time which I can't, and redo the ones that I did not do that. Teaching your kids the grace of God is one of the yeah. greatest things you could ever do as a dad. Amen. And the greatest, and the, and the best way to do that is the example of how God's grace is on your life because failure is never final in God's grace. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. We used to sing a song about that. Remember that? Failure isn't final with the Father. And um, failure leads you to that open door. When we know who we are in Christ, failure leads you to that open door of, of finding and falling on his grace and his redemption. I really, yeah, I really like that. And he did do that. Y'all may, may think that, oh, well, that's just Pastor Manny. And, you know, but you can ask every one of his children. And um, we did not hide our mistakes. We, you know. We celebrated the victories, but then we also had powwow times about all of the mistakes that he and I both made. So I, I really feel compelled to say this. There's parents out here that you feel like you're not doing what you're supposed to do, and now you're living in condemnation. Come on. Now, when I'm talking about parents, I'm talking about moms and, moms and dads. You're living in condemnation because you haven't done A, B, C, and D, and then now you're fearful that your kid's going to not be the person that God's called them to be or they're going to go into the world or they're going to go into a, another belief or just turn their backs on God. First of all, there's nothing that you can do for them to make the right decision. The decisions that they make, they make it on their own. Yes. 
the best that you can do is show God's grace to them. Amen. But having, okay, let, let me just, I'm going to be really honest now. We didn't have devotionals in our Rivera household. We didn't have devotionals. I feel better. Be free, be free. We didn't have, I'm free. we didn't have moments of prayer where we had to kind of gather and, and, and pray and, and force your kids to pray. You say, oh, no, 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 because I wanted our, our kids to understand their faith organically. I came from a Catholic background where we were all really bad Catholics, but my dad grew up as a strong Catholic for, for a few years there, and he, his only way of trying to teach us God is that we would sit and we had to sit at home every night and do a rosary. Hail Mary, full of grace, da 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 da. And he'll read a little bit of the Bible, and we did that for about two or three years, and I hated it. I couldn't stand it. And I'm thinking, if this is serving God, I don't want anything of it. My point here is this. You, if you do your devotionals, more power you're to you. But as long as you keep it organic and you let the kids develop a pursuit of God. Yeah. And how does that happen? Through you on your hands and your knees praying before the Lord that God will do that in their life. Now, now but, but you can't make it happen yourself. You can only create the environment for it. I need you to be free on that. Well, do y'all pray together as a family? Nope. And if this is offending you, it's because you're religious. And you think that doing da, 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 da. I just wish those who get offended at it that are religious, you can become more religious than attending church every Sunday. But that's neither here or there. And I'm getting really, really bold and aggravated now. But my point here is this. Quit trying to work your way and do this ritual of yeah. so you can be a better parent. You want to be a better parent? Cry in front of your kids. Talk to them about your failures. Yes. And then talk to them about your relationship with God. Yeah. Talk to them. Share your testimony with them. And, and encourage them. And then the rest of it. Now, if they're going to live in your house, the only thing you're going to be religious of, get them to the house of God. Come on. And don't give them an option about going to youth or going to young adults. Go. Get there. Exactly. Don't Ooh. ground them away from church. Come on. If you're a parent and you do that, may the fleas of a thousand camels invade every part of your body with hair. <laughs> so if you start itching, it's because you're doing it. No, church, do not take away church no. as a punishment. No. Good Lord, take away other things, but yes. get them to the house of God. Amen. Now the rest of it, they got to develop it. Yeah. You just work your way as a coach. And you're constantly creating an example and inspire them. Ask them a question here and there. Create a moment. I got to stop. That's good. That's good. I know we're at 12 o'clock, but I just really feel like we can do one more question. Okay. okay? You're the boss. All right. Well, I'm going to take it. It's Father's Day. So... I want to hear maybe not your opinion on this because but maybe from the from our other four gentlemen involvement in church because we just talked about how you know we shouldn't punish our kids from church so to have that involvement in church how important then is it for fathers to be actively involved in church activities and how could they encourage their families to participate participate as well um very very important like interestingly enough my kids want to get up at 6 a.m. when I serve for worship practice or when I'm doing security or when I'm doing usher and they're like we are coming and I'm like no I'm trying to get ready I'm trying to get in my worship zone when I come to you know you, Pastor Victoria know when I come for for worship I'm trying to get in my zone I'm trying to go I'm trying to go downstairs I'm trying to warm up I'm trying to I'm trying to be like uh you know not not like hurry up get upstairs get dressed hurry up and eat your breakfast right but but I, I need to slow down and say, if they want to come, they come. They, they come every time. And, and even when I come to worship practice, the times that I come, they say, Daddy, we want to come to worship practice. This is my girls. I have two girls. 
and they're here. They're sitting back there. Now, they, they've got devices, but they're hearing, right? They're, they're hearing. They're looking at worship. They're seeing me sing, right? They're watching me. Um, now my son has graduated from the, the young ministry. He's here now. He, he sees me. Um, so, you know, I, I just say I'm, I'm thankful, right? You know, you know, we, me and Pastor Andy text back and forth. Sometimes it's like, hey, is Abias coming to church? And I'm like, yeah, he's coming with me. Right. And then it's, and I'm like, hey, is Levi coming? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Levi's coming. And, and, and so that's exactly my son wants to come to church yeah. and play with yes. Levi because yeah. Levi always comes to my house. Come on. And I can't think of a more just a testament to Pastor Andy. Levi, Levi is awesome. Just Levi is an awesome kid. Um, and I see him growing leaps and bounds. Come on. Matter of fact, we had a work day. And I told my son, I said, you're getting up, you're coming to the work day. I modeled that. I said, you're coming. There's no, there's no discussion, no nothing. Yeah. You're going to come, you're going to work. And he worked. He didn't yeah. complain. Come on. Mm -hmm. um, but then I say all that to say, Pastor Andy had Levi driving the tractor. And I said, I said oh, my God. <laughs> is, is that okay? <laughs> and, he, and he talked to him. And he talked to him. And Levi was driving that thing being responsible and I'm like that blew my mind so I had to go up to him and I said Levi man you are being so responsible on that thing I love it you're growing I had to say that to him and and so that's one of the things too right you see these kids doing something great daughter son stop them and speak to them you see you see my daughters everybody knows my daughters they, they got the braids my wife my wife does braids that's a plug She's learning. She, she's learned. She does, she does their braids great. If, if y'all ever see, like, ooh, those braids look good. That was her. But in any case, you, you see them coming by um, anything that they do. Oh, you know, Ziva and, and Soraya, sometimes they occupy the babies. They'll occupy Kinsley. Um, they'll occupy Hazel. They'll occupy the other babies, right? And, and some of the parents love it, so... Um, it's important. Um, it's important, and um, a lot of times we have to make changes in our lives, in uh, in, in in order for us to you know be more involved. Yeah. And you know, from the beginning, what I said, being that example, because at the end of the yes. day, the kids are still watching. So uh, your presence in God's house it makes a difference. Yes. So um, yes, it's very important. Amen. How about you, Noah? Yeah, I'd say it's important. Um, I mean, our household is our mission field so Amen. to speak it's our first ministry if we're constantly giving without receiving yes how are we going to continuously give to our kids um so for us we've made it a non-negotiable to be here as often as we can be to be in you know in the middle of whatever is happening um and we've already seen the fruit of that because every time we come here hazel right. screams in the back of the seat we're home <laughs> <laughs> like she screams, we're home, and Aww. it brings so much joy to, yeah, to me exactly. because it means that we're doing something right. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah really, Absolutely. really quick because this is like my little soapbox. This is where I get frustrated because we have something on Father's Day, and, and we advertise it, and we ask people to invite people, and you look around, and traditionally and historically, if you look at the numbers, Father's Day is one of the least attended Sundays at church. And then you hear people saying, what are you doing for Father's Day? I just want to be alone. I'm going to go to the, 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 the lake and fish. I'm going to go do these things. And, and then those same men will complain at the demasculization of the men in America. And, and we're going, well, but it's because you don't want to be around. You don't want to be involved. We, we're more concerned about our comfort and what we want to do than getting to the house of the Lord. And so with me and my wife, we, it's not just get there on Sunday. We plan our vacations in front of our kids. And when we, I might ruffle your feathers, I will, I'll, we will pull out our calendar and we will go, what about September 12th? Can't do that. That's the life he awards. We're going to stay. And our kids are hearing us do this. And we look at the church calendar and we say, this is what's planned. And we're going to stay because it's important. Vacation is important. Spending time with my family is important, but not at the detriment of dishonoring what we have put on the calendar or what God is doing in this house. 
So for us, we schedule everything around church and we schedule everything around what we're doing here. From the very beginning, I've worn Levi on my back setting up and tearing down the church. Um, and now it's at a point where he does um, wake up. He's been in Nicaragua all week with terrible travel experience and not a lot of sleep. And last night he said, dad, can I wake up and go to church with you tomorrow morning? Oh, wow. And then he says, can you text and make sure Abias will be there? Can you text and make sure Owen will? He said, I know Owen won't be there. I already talked to him. He's got their schedules figured out because this is where God moves and this is where God can change lives. And when we're all together and we have brothers at a young age that can lift us up to be vulnerable, to cry in front of one another and to, to grow up a new generation of men. It's my goal that in this church, uh, Father's Day isn't gonna be the least attended Sunday anymore. That is something that we're gonna change the culture of because we're we're not gonna have a group of selfish men that wanna leave their family on Father's Day, but instead they're gonna say, we're going to the house of the Lord because we're gonna experience change in our family throughout the entire year, not just twice a year. I'm sorry, that's a well, huge frustration. Can I, can I say one more thing? If, if you're a father, you're watching on Facebook, the worship this morning was fire. You should you should have been here. God was downloading, angels were just in visions of angels in my head, all types of things as I was worshiping. That doesn't happen to me that much. So that was one of the great things. And I want to say, Anthony, back there doing the sound. Bro, bro, anoint, anointed today. Yes, yes. Doing the sound. He has learned the sound. And I told, and I told his dad, Jose, I said, what a blessing. He's back there. Come on. The sound is just Come sounding on. great. And I said, and, and he's a father. Yes. And, and I love it. He's working today. He could have chose, he lo I know he loves golf. He could have chose to, to be like, I'm Come out. I'm going to play golf. But he was back there yes. Come on. with his hand on the sound, anointing the sound. And I know he's growing in Christ. Yes. Right? I know God is doing something in his life. Amen. So I love it. Let's, let's walk around, let's encourage the men more here yes. and speak life into them. And I speak life into you. Amen. Amen. He's also a sound engineer for Sony Atlantic Amen. Records. And so, um, no, so he, he works with really famous artists. And sometimes he works up until 4 o'clock in the morning. And he's still here at church. And it still serves. He's got a beautiful daughter and another one on the way. And, uh, and of course, and of course, well, he is, is the husband of beautiful Leslie in the back. I call her Miss Prego. And, uh, but um, thank you, Anthony. Thank yeah. you so thank much. You. Hey, guys, it's, it's 12.09. And um, Pastor Victoria, thank you for, for, for I know. You probably have more questions for us, right? Um, but we can kind of maybe continue and not just use Father's Day, but maybe throughout the year. Uh, the panels have received a lot of uh, uh, compliments, and we might split up and maybe do a married panel uh, here very soon. And we, can, and, and we can just get more information. You need to hear more from the leaders and the Amen. folks and the people that make up Discover Life Amen. Church. I'm Amen. so excited over our midweek, what's yeah. happening in our midweek. We're filling up the whole church, and you're showing up. We do a, le a college lecture style, and we've been dealing with the subject, um, a demonology subject, and I Come call on. it Demon Slayer, uh, where I am teaching and exposing darkness, but yeah. really I'm bringing a lot of correction to superstitions yeah. and old wives tales and how Christians think about demons um, we're bringing a correction from people who don't believe in them at all to people who believe too much in them and are and are living their lives by fear and superstition we're bringing a balance to it all by elevating God's truth and God's word and you need to show up I will talk about this Wednesday on the difference between possession and oppression. And if there is a difference or explain the difference between all of them and then we'll slide into part one, 
of the hierarchy of demonic uh, powers. And um, you need to be here for that so you can learn how to be a demon slayer. The devil is under your foot, Amen. your feet, and you stomp on him. You carry the authority of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Guys, thank you so much. Yes. Absolutely. This week, at least, we celebrated seven years of you guys being here, right? So I don't have some grand thing. I just want to say thank you guys for, for following the call of God on your life. Um, I know I know that this year, we can all stand and clap while I talk because I want to, is that okay? Can I take over? Okay. I know that, I know that moving up here and what you walked into might be, might have looked a little bit different than what you guys thought. And it took every bit of faith to do what you guys did. Um, selfishly, I, I just, I thank you. Happy Father's Day. You've, you've adopted me and um, I wouldn't be where I am today if it were not for the both of you. So I thank you guys both for taking that step. It's huge for me personally and selfishly. But as the church, I look at this building, I look at, I look at the people, I look at everything that God has done and I think, man, all because you guys got a really crazy word from the Lord and I'm thankful to him, but I'm thankful for you guys because it has been difficult. And so I just wanted to honor you guys publicly and tell you thank you so much. Happy seven, seven years? Seven years. Seven Today. years. Today. Every Father's Day. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Um, and I believe after seven years, we are now just beginning to do what God's called us to do here at Discover Life Church. Thank you for, for those who are with us on our, on our first day here seven years ago, and you're still with us, which is only a small handful left um, because that's basically how church works. You either are a part of the foundation or you're scaffolding. Yeah. And pray that you're not scaffolding. Pray that you become part of the foundation. If you've come from other ministries or this is the first time, your first church, pray that this becomes your only church where you and your children and your children's children Amen. will stay in, the, in this vision and you grow in Christ. Thank you for all those who were with us seven years ago on that day where Pastor Victoria and I took a... Uh, like a I think it was like a $28,000 pay cut to come here. And we took a mega step of faith, lived in my brother's basement um, until we were able to buy a house that we were looking for. And uh, we took a risk coming here. But look what God has done. And you are here. And we thank you very, very much. Well, is anybody, does anybody here not know Jesus? Raise your hand if you want Jesus to come into your life and you want to be born again and you heard everything and you say I can't do this without Jesus anybody at all I'm looking left and right and I believe everybody here knows Jesus I want to make sure you do okay uh, fathers I love you very much barbecue I'm going to have a bunch of folks at my house if you didn't get invited it's because you're you're eating somewhere else and you're spending time with your family Whew, I got out of that one really good um and so, but I'm going to have fun, and then Zion's cooking for me, right? And pa Pastor Victoria baked Grandma's carrot cake. And, uh, and I'm, I'm really excited about that. And so, lift up your hands. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May you live his purpose and walk in his plan but you go forth always the head never the tail always above and never beneath for you will break out to the left and you will break out to the right and the glory of the lord will go before you because goodness and mercy will always follow you Amen. dads go in his strength Use the grace of the Lord and the presence of God on your life to be the best dad you could ever be. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Call your daddies, dads. Make sure you talk to them. I'm going to do that today. I love you guys. Once again, can we just say thank you to our panel this morning for all of our young men.
Tell them happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, guys. We love you. Thank you, guys. We really appreciate your help this morning. Wow, what an incredible time. Do you have words? I'm like sitting and taking everything in. Um, and just the main things that I could take away is like you have to build the foundation. Mm. And yes, people are going to make decisions and everything. But as parents, I know we're not parents, <laughs> but, you know, as fathers, like a father has a role in a family. Absolutely. And it's not to condemn. It's not to say you're not doing it right. It's more like to encourage you. Like yep. it's possible. It is possible to have a house that loves the Lord. It's possible to have family and children that love the Lord. So I hope this encourages you yep. as you go about your week and go, as, go about your day. It's not about how you're doing it. It's about you loving the Lord to the point that you just point everybody back to him. It's all about Jesus like everything else man I could talk about this all day but it's all about Jesus that's so true and I love what Johnson said how you know they are just being obedient to God but it's the Holy Spirit that does the work Come so on. that is like so encouraging I feel like as parents because yeah. it gets heavy when you try and bear it all by yourself so I just pray that this encouraged you just to rely on the Holy Spirit rely on the Lord and let him be your strength and so we just bless you church we pray that you have an incredible week and that yes. you would come join us yes. on Wednesday yes. at 6 45. 6 p.m. for bre- 6 uh, not breakfast. 6 p.m. Come eat with us. Yeah, dinner. dinner. Come eat with us at 6 p.m., guys. We'd love to see you there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have a great week. Have a wonderful week. We love you guys. Take care.